Hello, it's Katie here. In today's little video, I want to show you how to string a necklace. Now this came from a question that a lady recently asked me. She's quite new to jewellery making and beading in general, and she was wondering how to create strong jewellery, and she wanted some tips about finishing off in particular, because one of the tricky parts is ending up with a lot of gapping between your beads, or between the beads and the clasp. So I thought this is a video I should have put together anyway, so why not do it now? I'm going to be showing you how to make the necklace I'm wearing, and the beads that I'm using in that are actually beaded beads. There will be a pattern available for those, but as I launch this video, it's not around yet. It's going to be a project I'm launching for International Beading Week in 2020. If you're watching after August 2020, then you will find the pattern available. But never mind about that, I've also put together a blog post alongside this, and you really will want to use that as well as the video. In that I do give you details about the beaded beads that we're using, but more importantly I also explain about the other materials, and the tools, and there's more information about the techniques, so if anything isn't 100% clear on the video itself, pop over to the blog and you'll find some downloads, extra photos, all sorts of additional information that will help you to see things more clearly. But with any luck, this is a great introduction to how to make a strong necklace. You don't have to use the beads that I'm using, it works with any beads at all. So it's something to try out and uh, you know, use your own creativity. And with this, you'll be able to make jewellery that you'll love wearing, jewellery that you can give to friends and family, and perhaps even one day jewellery to be selling at craft fairs. So I'm going to stop waffling on here and let's get on with the video demonstration and uh, see how you go. Okay, so the first step when you're creating a strong necklace is to decide on your bead arrangements. Now I've got my collection of Super Duo beaded beads here and I've also decided that I think they would look good with some spacer beads in between them. So here I've got some, uh, they're actually 6mm round black beads that I'm going to use. And this whole setup is a bead board. I mean, you can read that. And it's just brilliant because it means I can lay everything out using these grooves. The numbers around here tell me what length I'm creating, which is really helpful. Now, you don't have to use one of these. Uh, you can just lay everything out on your bead mat or your working area or whatever is convenient. But let me start with the center. It's usually the easiest place to get an arrangement going. So I'm using my multicolored bead for my focal center. So we'll pop that in there. We want the spacer bead on either side of it. Now I need to arrange these as I want them in order. So let me just play around with a few ideas and we'll see where we end up. I think I really want to kind of mix the colours up quite well in this and I'm also going to try and alternate between my two colour beads and my single colour beads. So that would mean I want one of these orangey pinky beads next in plane and let's keep to the order we've got so we'll do the cream two colour next. So that would mean a blue, but we need a single colour. And a spacer bead. And that is the last of this set. So I think that works quite well. Let me just mirror that on the other side. Actually, you know what? I'm not even going to mirror this. Let me try playing around, almost reversing the colours this time. So let's do that one, and that one. Spacer in there. Let's try, so we'd need to do a blue one next. Then we'd want the cream. No, we don't. Let's try that orange. And the cream and the blue. 
Now you'll notice because my beaded beads are not sort of sitting flat into the groove, it's actually a bit tricky to properly get these so I can see the length. I'm going to play around with that and when I have got them roughly positioned that's going to give me an indication of the finished length of my necklace. So it's about 21 centimetres each side, 42 centimetres in total. Now I'm just going to pause here and continue to play around a little bit and see whether I want to make any changes to my order. But I'll leave you to do the same thing with your beads, have a play around and work out what order you want to string them in. Right, I just moved my board slightly out the way to make room for actually working. I'm going to string my beads using this Econoflex. Um, it's like craft and beading wire. It's basically really, really fine strands of wire that have been bonded together to create a string. So it's got the flexibility to hang nicely, but it's also incredibly strong. And the way we're going to use this is with crimp beads to secure the ends. So you want to start by cutting a length of your wire, you'll use wire cutters to do that, and make sure that it's at least 15 centimetres, that's about six inches longer than what you think your finished necklace length is going to be, because you'll need that extra to work at the beginning and the end of the string. So I'm going to start by taking one end, I'm stringing on a small crimp bead, just want to get that over the end, then I'm going to put on my split ring and I'm going to pass the end of the wire back through the crimp bead and if I slide that up I want to get that in place as close as possible to my split ring as I can comfortably manage. So I've got plenty of excess wire sticking out here just to help me along later on. got my toolkit here so let's just grab my crimping pliers and let's seal in that crimp bead. So I'm going to include a link to a sheet that will help you see exactly how to use these crimping pliers. But basically you've got one set of teeth on there that will squash your crimp flat and then a second set that will just curve it over nicely to give it a rounded shape. And if it's not super neat, don't worry, because we're going to end up covering it with crimp covers. So now we've got that done, just check that that end is secure, that, that crimp bead is holding fast, and we can start stringing. So we'll move along to the other end of the wire, and all you're going to do is work along your setup from the board, adding your beads one at a time. So these first couple of beads, you're going to need to make sure you get both ends of the wire through. That just takes that loose end away from the crimp so there's no danger of it kind of popping out later on. Now as we come to my beaded bead, you're going to see because this is a long stretch to go through, it's a bit tricky. You get it in one end, no problem, but because the wire's got a curvature to it, you just need to feed it through and we'll see where it pops out. At the moment it seems to be hitting something. So I feels like it's going somewhere but I can't see it. Let's keep pushing it in. So I just wanted to demonstrate this because it is tricky and you're going to have to fiddle things around basically. That seems to be getting lost inside so let's back it out and try again. Alright, that's popped out the side there gives me some indication of where it's going so I can try and aim it for the end. It's gone out the other side. And let me keep on going. There we go. Got it through the end. So you want to try and make sure it ends up through that central hole. Sometimes if they pop out just down here, you can actually pull it through and then feed it back in and out. Is the only trick that I've found that works. So if I slide this along as well, let's just move that out the way. And let's see if I can get that second end secured inside. And then that's nicely buried inside that big bead, so nothing bad will happen. So I'm just going to keep on doing that. Um, you've seen how painful it is to get my Super Duo beads through the wire, so you don't need to watch me struggle on the video. 
I'm just going to string everything in the order that I laid it out and when I've done that I'll come back and show you how to finish off at the end. Right, here we are with all my beads strung onto the wire. Just give you a couple of pointers as well. You'll see I've got a nice really long length of wire left, which is great. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but the end of it's got quite bent. Now when you've got plenty of wire like this, if it is getting really bent and you're finding it difficult to string, you can actually afford to just chop off a little bit to give you a neat clean end as you're going. The other trick you can try is just running the wire between your fingernail and, and the finger and hopefully that will sort of straighten it out a little bit. So those are just a couple of tips if you need any. But let's look at how we're going to finish off. So because these are heavy beads they all slide along very well. I want to make sure that there's no gapping at the beginning, everything is butted up, which it is. Then what I'm going to do is string on my other crimp bead bring that down and again string on another split ring slide those up and this is the other benefit of having lots of wire to play with I'm as before going to string back through the crimp beads so that it's securing my ring on pull everything up tight and then because I've got this lovely long length of wire as I pull that down, it's pulling my crimp bead up right next to the final bead in my string where I want it and at the same time pulling in the ring. And what I can do now is anchor that so that will help because the biggest difficulty with doing this second end is that everything separates out and you end up with gapping. It's not always at the end, sometimes things separate and you've got big gaps further along. So you just need to watch that and try and make sure you've got things held in place with no gapping along. When you're happy with that, then you can crimp again. So let's just do that. And again, this crimp is going to be a lot, lot harder to sort out because you've got beads right next to it. So rather than mess this up, trying to hold it away so you can see what's going on with the camera, I'm going to pause here and actually just seal my crimp again and then come back and show you the next step. Okay, that's got my crimp sealed off. Now I want to just fix in this end so I don't need this much wire. I'm going to start by just trimming it down so I've got a much shorter length get rid of the excess and then I just want to feed that length into the first couple of beads or the end couple of beads however you're viewing it. Again that's just to make sure that I'm getting the length away from the crimp so there's no danger of it sort of slipping out as you're wearing the necklace. It's got that one through. See if I can get it through into this beaded bead because that would be quite handy if I can. Yeah. Looks like that might go, or might not. If you can't get it through too many beads, don't worry. Uh, you can trim it off there, so you take the pliers and trim right down. I'm going to go and continue persevering to try and get that in. But the next step will be to add your crimp covers. So these are little, little like semicircles of metal, and they've got indentation in the middle. So what you want to do is slip that over the crimp so your crimp is sitting nicely inside your cover. Then I use flat nose pliers for this and I support the back of the cover with my finger as you can see and just use the pliers to squeeze it closed. Again it's tricky just because you've got so much other stuff in the way. So. Please be nice and squeeze, that's it, it's going. And you can just keep squeezing it until you've got your two ends meeting. And again, I will continue to do that, but what you'll end up with is a tidy looking cover over your crimp. So if the crimp was a bit messy, that's all hidden. I mean, this is completely optional. The crimp covers are just a nice finishing touch, but you don't have to use them. If you want, you can leave your crimps. And the final step is to find a clasp 
and just attach it onto the rings on either end. And the reason I've done that is if the clasp breaks, and clasps can do over time, you're not going to end up having to remake the entire necklace. You can just switch out the broken clasp and switch in a new one. And this length of beads that you've just worked so hard to string will remain intact. And if you're using good quality wire, then it should last for many years and you'll get plenty of enjoyment out of it. Let me just finish up with a quick note on clasps. I'm using an S-shaped clasp and the reason being it's got open ends. So it's obviously got the open end that will hook through the other half of the clasp like so. But it's also got opening the other end, so that's allowed me to just slip it onto my ring. And then I can just use my pliers to carefully squeeze that end closed so that it's secure. Now I was tempted by another type of hook clasp like this one. But when I looked, the ring for joining that is completely sealed on the back. So I'd have no way of opening it up to put it onto my ring. I mean, this kind of clasp is brilliant if you're bead weaving and you're stitching straight through the ring because there's no cracks in it that thread can escape through. But for this, not so good. So whatever kind of clasp you choose, it doesn't matter. Uh, you want to find something that you're going to feel comfortable doing and undoing. But the only thing to check is whether you can open and close the end that's going to join on to your jewellery. In theory, you could use a jump ring to join between the clasp and the split ring. But the reason I don't do that is I found jump rings can pull apart over time. So this is quite a heavy necklace. So all the time you're wearing it, the weight of it is going to be dragging to some degree on the clasp. So you don't want anything that's going to be in danger of pulling apart. If you have got something that you're a bit worried about, then just check every time you wear the necklace, make sure everything is securely in place. But it's just another thing to think about when you're choosing clasps. Well, I hope you found that helpful. Once again, do have a look at the blog post that goes alongside this. I've added a link below and you should see a link in the end titles in a minute as well. As I said before, that gives you all sorts of extra information. So if you weren't clear on any of the tools or any of the materials that I was using, you'll find all that described in the blog post. If you enjoyed this video, then please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way you won't miss out anything else that I create. I have a different collection of videos. Some are technique demonstrations like this, the occasional project, and sometimes just fun beading stuff. So there's lots on there to enjoy. Thank you again for watching. Wishing you happy beading and uh, stay safe.